from the Mercy One Studio. Talking about the things that matter most to you. Today's Catholic Women. Catholic Women Now with Julie Nelson and Chris McGruder is underwritten by Farm Bureau agent Cindy Schulte, a licensed representative of Blue Cross Blue Shield of Iowa, cindyschulte.com, and Fred Haas. Over 30 years helping injured Iowans recover losses from accidents and work-related injuries. Fred Double D, Haas Double A. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Catholic Women Now, COVID-19 style here. <laughs> This so, is Chris Magruder. And we're thankful that you are all joining us today, whether you're listening from your home, on an iPad, or your iPhone via the Iowa Catholic Radio app, which I've been listening to a lot lately in my, since I've, we're all been homebound more. <laughs> and uh, so welcome. We just thank you for joining us today here at the Catholic Women Coffee Table. Yeah, Tea we, table. We, or we, we were just talking a little bit about how... What are you doing these days, Julie? You know, (laughs) this has really been, I kind of agree with people that have voiced these sentiments. It's really been a time of prayer for me and and connecting with God. And I was just thinking today, Chris, how um, we've been stripped. You know, Mm. we're, we're, you know, we're being stripped. We've been all the things that we, um, our self-reliance, you know, on our, you know, things that we can think we're in control of and ourselves and stuff. It's all kind of been taken away. And I I kind of had this, (laughs) this probably not is not the best example, but all of a sudden I had this image of Jesus going into the temple and turning the tables over and saying, people. Mm. I'm getting your attention. Mm-hmm. I'm getting you know, your attention. I've been, you know, working on the veil removed. I'm always praying, Lord, help the people to yearn for you. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> when you don't have something, you want it more. And that's, that's what right. I'm finding, too. Well, you know, and yesterday when I was doing virtual mass, um, it just came over me and I just started crying. It's like, I can't wait, Lord, to receive mm-hmm. you again. Mm-hmm. And it, it, I, it, it, it's a thirst. Mm-hmm. And it's a way for us, when you're feeling that thirst, for me, to really understand that thirst that Jesus has for souls. You know, Mother Teresa is on every altar in every one of her homes is in um, any of the missionaries' homes, convents, is the words, I thirst. Mm, I thirst yes. for souls. And, yes. you know, we're, we are longing for Jesus, so we have that commonality with him. We understand we're empathizing with his thirst for souls. I'll tell you, souls. we went to Colorado very briefly for spring break, and we got there, and the Archdiocese of Denver had closed all the churches already. And I just cried. I know. Ah, oh, we went in, you know, thinking that there was going to be mass, and you could go you, into the adoration chapel. But it was, it was that was a hard, that was a hard moment. Well, you kind of just like, we'll go to mass. Yeah, it's there. Yeah, you, you, yeah. you kind of there's a way, a little bit of yeah assumption. Yeah, there, and or presumption. Kinda, and, and then, then you then... kind of hope your your priest friends will maybe come to a private mass for you. Nope, no. Nope. The Lord really is asking us to. Well, he's asking me at least to miss him, and I, I yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is that. There is that, and you know. And I think about. I bet you thought too. Did I receive him fully the last time I received him? When you found out you couldn't receive him again for a while. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because we went Saturday night. Yeah. And I always try to have that disposition of the heart, like, oh Lord, I don't want to ever take you for granted. Mm-hmm. But did I do it enough? Because the next day everything was shut down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I was glad that I went to a daily mass the, before we took off. So, uh-huh. well, you know what? We need to begin with prayers. Well, of. and our guest, we have a guest today too, um, Jennifer Risting, a consecrated woman with Regnum Christi, who's written a book about Mary Magdalene. So, Mary Magdalene, of course, is going to be playing a big role here coming up on Easter Sunday and throughout the next week of Holy Week, which is hard to believe that's next oh, week. So fast. Um, so, she's going to be talking about Mary Magdalene and her and her new book about her. So, I'm excited mm-hmm. about that. So, yeah. let's start with prayer. Okay. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, we're coming up against a break, and when we come back, you'll be listening to Catholic Women on Iowa Catholic Radio, and we will be talking to Jennifer Ristine, the author of the book, Mary Magdalene. 
Thank you to Mercy College of Health Sciences, downtown Des Moines, for underwriting our show, The Uncommon Good, with me, Bo Bonner. And I'm Bud Marr. A degree from Mercy College provides endless possibilities. Students have access to patients with complex medical conditions, state-of-the-art medical facilities, highly motivated healthcare professionals, and classroom professors that transform them into servant leaders. You can start the programs in fall, spring, or summer. There are endless possibilities available online at mchs.edu slash kwky. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio's broadcast of Dowling Catholic Sports and Activities is provided by Kemen, a global ingredient manufacturer using science to transform the quality of life for 80% of the world. Kemen is on the leading edge of molecular science, manufacturing more than 500 specialty ingredients for the human and animal health and nutrition, pet food, aquaculture, nutraceutical, food technologies, crop technologies, and textile industries. Kemen strives to sustainably transform the quality of life every day for 80% of the world with their products and services. Kemen, using science to transform the world. Online at Kemen.com. Since 1924, St. Vincent de Paul has been helping those less fortunate work towards self-sufficiency. Last year, St. Vincent de Paul helped over 20,000 individuals with food, clothing, and shelter, while also offering classes in financial literacy, high school completion, career readiness, and prisoner re-entry. SVDPDSM.org, 515-282-8327. Shop, donate, volunteer, serve. This message was brought to you by Homemakers Furniture. Father Kirby, pastor of St. Elizabeth Parish in Carlisle, will lead a 10-day pilgrimage to the Holy Land, August 3rd through the 12th. Walk where Jesus walked in Nazareth, Mount Tabor, the Jordan River, the Dead Sea, Jericho, Bethany, Bethlehem, and the Old City of Jerusalem. Learn more at crownofbethlehem.com. Crownofbethlehem.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Corel Contractor, serving Des Moines site work constructed needs for over 60 years, and the Iowa ENT Center, expert ear, nose, and throat care for adults and children. Well, welcome back to Catholic Women Now here on Iowa Catholic Radio. We're delighted you are joining us today. We're going to have, uh, inter- I want to introduce our guest, Jennifer Ristine. She's a consecrated woman of Regnum Christi for the past 22 years. And while leaving, living in Magdala for four years, Jennifer became more devoted to Mary Magdalene, and she has since written a book, Mary Magdalene, Insights from Ancient Magdala. So Jennifer, thank you, and welcome to Catholic Women Now. Thank you, Julie. Thanks for having me on. Well, I think, uh, Jennifer, one of the things that maybe we can just get out of the way right away is if you could just briefly explain what a consecrated woman is, because I think there's probably women, people listen to like, consecrated, what does that mean? So yeah. I know it's canonical, so if sure. you could just give us a brief. Sure, yeah, well, I think the easiest explanation is that God has called um, men and women for years to be dedicated totally, totally to him. And this is one way, there are many manifestations of how we can be dedicated to the Lord and serve Him. Uh, in the Church, um, Under uh, there are what are called religious, and then there are um, others who fall into different categories. One, of, one such is called the Society of Apostolic Life. And so this is particularly, um, I am particularly consecrated in the Regnum Christi movement, which is a Society of Apostolic Life, and we take vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience, lived in a particular uh, form according to our charism and according to our um, apostolic work. So we come together as a community to for a particular mission, a specific mission. And hmm. just from experience, I can tell you personally, um, it was a bit confusing for me before I even understood this uh, when I was asserting my vocation. I felt like the Lord was calling me to be totally His. I wanted to dedicate myself to sharing the good news, um, teaching the faith, etc., but I didn't understand why I didn't feel called to be a nun, as many of the religious congregations as I looked into. And one day I met a consecrated woman of Regnum Christi, and I just knew, that's it. I don't know what you are, but that's it. <laughs> so that, you know that, that you know that you know, right? Exactly. So yeah. I'm going to ask what listeners are going to be thinking. What is the mm-hmm. difference between a nun or a sister and a consecrated? Yes. Um, so we are, I guess you could say, a little bit more inserted into the world. Um, it, it's We all fall under the same um, Vatican office as for uh, who we depend on and who we receive guidance from, but um, there are different religious Orders, religious congregations have their 
own kind of way of living their um, life and consecrated lay people have our particular way and more inserted into the world, I would say. Okay, okay. So you're not living in community? We actually do live in okay. community, yeah. And so, again, there are so many different variations, sure. uh, thousands of variations. Some consecrated women uh, live on their own. Some live in community. Um, but the Society of Epstock Life, the very particular characteristic is our community life is oriented around a mission-driven focus. Okay. 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 Well, tell us a little bit about the history of what drew you to your friendship with Mary Magdalene. Oh, well, um, drew me, or she drew, she really befriended me, I would have to say. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, it goes back to 2006 when uh, my mother passed away, and I just felt this vacuum, this hole in my heart. I think she was, for me, a sort of security in knowing myself um, loved unconditionally. You know, you kind of have this foundation background, and you find security in that. And when that was gone, I felt like I was kind of groping for how to fill that vacuum with other things. I wouldn't say uh, completely illegitimate things, but um, it, things that I realized I'm relegating the Lord off to the side and looking for security and success, security in the things that I possess, in friendships, etc. And when I realized that, I said, no, I want the Lord to be the center of my heart and my, you know, firm foundation and security. So at the same time, different passages from Scripture that I associated with Mary Magdalene just began to kind of surface in my my morning uh, time of meditation and prayer. And so I began to see her as a woman who must have experienced uh, deep, security and the unconditional love of Jesus, and that was an impulse to just make her go out there and uh, passionately uh, love Jesus and and serve others. I said, I want that. So I began to ask her for that um, intercession. Mary Magdalene intercede for me that I might have a pure heart that loves Jesus passionately and give myself uh, to others with that passionate love. Um, That was in 2006. And I have prayed that every day, asking for her intercession. And in 2014, 18 years later, I received a call from my superior because we're sent to different places around the world. And I was asked if I would go help out in a project that had just begun in the Holy Land called Ancient Magdala. Hmm. Oh, the hometown (laughs) of Mary Magdalene. That's when I realized, huh, I think... Uh, Mary Magdalene has befriended me, and now she's inviting me to share a mission with her. So uh, off I went. Oh, well, there and you went. I lived for four years. I lived for four years in ancient Magdala, helping with um, with a site, with this uh, new, I would say, emerging holy site. So I can just say just living four years in the Holy Land would just be awesome and an ox- experience. Mm-hmm. So while you were there, I mean, you were walking in the same place as Mary Magdalene walked on the same streets. Yeah. And she really wanted to hang out yeah. with her. Yeah, she just really just <laughs> really drew you in, yeah. didn't she? She's like, come on over for coffee and stay a while. <laughs> Catholic women now over yeah. in Magdala. Yeah. Oh, well, I think we should do a remote. Um, we'll bring Jennifer oh, with yeah. us. <laughs> um, so, let's go. Yeah, Ready. let's go. So as you walked those streets and you contemplate, Mary Magdalene being there with you. What was going through your mind, and what did you, how did you grow deeper in your friendship with her? Yeah, well, I have to um, say, first of all, um, I was exposed to thousands of people coming into the site who were asking questions about Mary Magdalene and who had different opinions or were throwing out new pieces of information I'd never heard about her. So, first of all, it made me uh, look, research, go to the sources, Secondly, just walking around the site, you know, uh, around a first century synagogue that existed in the time Jesus was there, I began to imagine, what if she saw him heal somebody here? What if she ran into him in the street and she saw how he dealt with the Pharisees, you know, kind of uh, calling them out, or saw him with his gentleness with the children? What if she was walking along the harbor and he was, um, at the beginning of his public ministry, uh, going and preaching, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. What went on inside of her mm. to bring her to the point that she became, as Luke chapter 8, verse 3 says, the woman from whom Jesus expelled seven demons, 
And then she cared for him out of her own resources. She's there at the foot of the cross. She is the first woman to receive the good news or to, to, that he appears to uh, in Scripture, and then she becomes his apostle of the apostle. So it definitely gave a lot of food for thought of her interior journey. And you got to see her I heart. Wondered. Yeah, I feel like I began to imagine what her heart must have been like to encounter Jesus. Mm. What that what that meant for her. Mm. Yeah, that's beautiful. Definitely. You know, I think about that when I meet a friend and then and then I meet their family and then you get more insight to who they are. So Jennifer, one of the questions I have is like we are modern day women. What can we as modern day women learn from a woman from centuries ago? Mm, I think uh, the power of Jesus' redemptive love, first of all, and um, hope. I think she's truly an icon of hope. Here's a woman, for whatever reason, there um, she, uh, she finds herself bound. Um, the scripture says that Jesus expelled seven demons, so there's definitely this need for liberation, and we know the sinful human condition is in need of redemption. So no matter what situation we're facing, Jesus can step into that. I like to say he steps into the messiness of our life. I love that. Big or small mess, he steps in. She's she's the saint for now. She's our hope saint. She is. Wow. What a beautiful message for this time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And and I've seen so many people um, attracted to her uh, of different faith backgrounds. Ah. Wow. It probably, you know, likely because so many of us see the sinner in her in ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we have yeah. about 30 mm-hmm. seconds. Tell us real, before we break here, I don't get us start a little bit about the Rome tradition with the red egg. Sure. Uh, so this is a beautiful tradition that's held by the Orthodox Church that uh, she could not take the fact that Pontius Pilate had killed Jesus, an innocent man. And so she goes to tell the Caesar she goes to Rome to give Caesar a piece of her mind. That's that's the start of it. And uh, obviously we don't know if there if it did any good, if he converted, but uh, one of the signs is this red egg. It seems that she was holding an egg for pedagogical purposes, perhaps, and then Jesus, or sorry, Caesar says, I'm not going to believe that a man rose from the dead unless that egg turns red. And the egg turned red. So, wow. So uh, in the Orthodox Church, in the Orthodox Church, the red egg is kind of a big deal then this time of year. Yeah, it definitely uh, in Easter time. Yeah. Yes. Yep, yeah. Definitely thank you. Easter, thank you. This time of year. Yeah. Yep. Well, I yeah. think I'm going to do a red egg in my Easter basket this year. I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I like that. That's too. Good, good conversation yeah. starter at home. I like so. that too. So, well, we got to take a break here, and when we come back, you're listening to Catholic Women Now on Iowa Catholic Radio, and when we come back, we will be talking more with Jennifer Risting on Mary Magdalene. What is the best gift ever? Well, some might say a Catholic education, and I agree. But if you think you can't afford Catholic education, think again. Apply for CTO, and you could receive up to half your tuition for kindergarten through 12th grade. More information is online, ctoiowa.org. The bottom line, it's for the kids and their future. Thank you to Mercy One for their support of Iowa Catholic Radio. From the cardiovascular experts of the Iowa Heart Center to the pediatric services of Mercy Children's Hospital and Clinics, Mercy provides complete care for Central Iowa's adults and children with more than 50 primary care and specialty clinics in the Des Moines area. Find a convenient Mercy One location near you. Online at mercydesmoines.org. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio's broadcast of Dowling Catholic Sports and Activities is provided by Kemen, a global ingredient manufacturer using science to transform the quality of life for 80% of the world. Kemen is on the leading edge of molecular science, manufacturing more than 500 specialty ingredients for the human and animal health and nutrition, pet food, aquaculture, nutraceutical, food technologies, crop technologies, and textile industries. Kemen strives to sustainably transform the quality of life every day for 80% of the world with their products and services. Kemen, using science to transform the world. Online at Kemen.com. 
Since 1924, St. Vincent de Paul has been helping those less fortunate work towards self-sufficiency. Last year, St. Vincent de Paul helped over 20,000 individuals with food, clothing, and shelter, while also offering classes in financial literacy, high school completion, career readiness, and prisoner re-entry. SVDPDSM.org, 515-282-8327. Shop, donate, volunteer, serve. This message was brought to you by Homemakers Furniture. Welcome back to Catholic Women Now. You're listening to Chris Magruder and Julie Nelson on Iowa Catholic Radio. And we're talking this morning with Jennifer Ristine, a 22-year-old veteran of the Regnum Christi Consecrated Female Movement. <laughs> That's probably not correct. You're a consecrated virgin, correct, Jennifer? Yeah, we, we say consecrated lay women. Lay yes. women. Okay, very good. Mm-hmm. Well, tell us mm-hmm. about what French tradition says about Mary Magdalene. I'm sure this is something new that I learned when I went to Magdala and worked there. So uh, this is from the Golden Legend. It's told, a story told in the Golden Legend in the Middle Ages, and it says that about 14 years after Jesus was crucified and resurrected, uh, there was a lot of Christian persecution, and they would the Romans would put these Christians on rafts or boats and just set them out in the Mediterranean Sea to drift and die. Well, miraculously, Mary Magdalene and her crew, um, who were on her boat, they arrived to southern Gaul, um, or southern France, which is, was Gaul at that time. And this is a, Ro- a Roman province. She saw these temples erected to the pagan gods, and she just couldn't stand it. So she began to share the good news, preach about Jesus. And uh, she actually had encount- an encounter with the prince, of the region, and he converted, and that meant the whole province converted. So she's associated her and Lazarus and her spiritual father, Maximin, uh, who became a bishop of that area, too, are associated with the conversion of the people of that area. So we, we can see in both the Roman tradition and the French tradition of um, a, a similar characteristic to sacred scriptures, this Mary Magdalene and sacred scriptures, in that She went to share the good news. She was just passionate about sharing that, you know, Jesus has risen. um, He's conquered sin and death, and and she can't hold it in. She, wherever she is, no matter the circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds a little bit feisty. I love that. She was convicted. I mean, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and and I think what I, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead and finish, because I I have a different direction I might go. Okay. Well, what I love about both of these traditions, the Rome tradition and the French France tradition, whether they're um, whether they're embellished or not, um, I think we see the Mary Magdalene we see in sacred scriptures, and you see a woman who's not afraid to go to the leaders of society and and speak the truth, right? Speak truth, speak um, about the gospel, and uh, because of her passionate heart. She mm. really wants others mm-hmm. to come to know Jesus. She's reminding so me of, is, of the little flower, mm-hmm. the way that she just went right to the Pope mm-hmm. and said, hey, I want to become a saint. I was thinking yeah. of St. Catherine, Sienna. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're feisty women. Yeah. I'm yeah. Gonna, <laughs> right. But in love, with it's great charity. Yes. With a very yeah. charitable yes. heart. Yeah, in love. So yes. truth and love. Yes. So there's some... And this con- is what I mean of... Go ahead. I'm this is what say- I mean of purity of heart, right? Yeah. Yes. Passionate love yes. for Jesus. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I was going to ask, just tell us a little bit about, I know some people confuse Mary of Magdala with Mary of Bethany. We're not sure if they're the same person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, um, I'm not sure if they are either. So this is something that uh, Mary of, I would like to think they are. That's actually how I grew up, think associating the two of them together. But um, in the Western Church, in the Catholic Church, the predominant uh tendency was to believe that Mary of Bethany, Mary of Magdala are the same person. But in the Eastern Church, there's a long-standing tradition that they are actually different people. So what's happened is, over the course of time, particularly with um, a rise in uh, uh, studies of sacred scripture in the early 20th century, um, deeper scripture studies, uh, the Catholic Church also began to question this. So a group a Jesuit called the Bolandists, who study hagi- hagiography, the study of saints, they made a proposal to the Vatican uh, for the revision of the liturgy in the 1960s, 
and said, you know, we, we see in sacred scripture Mary Magdalene named here, 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 and here, but, but we have this distinction between a Mary of Bethany and Mary of Magdala, and so they um, made the proposal to kind of, in the liturgy, disassociate them, since it wasn't so clear. And then Pope Francis also, when he elevated the um, feast day, the, the day that we celebrate Mary Magdalene on July 23rd, um, he raised it from a memorial day to a feast day on the level, same level as the apostles. And he also um, reiterated what we know about Mary Magdalene, we see in sacred scriptures. Um, boom, boom, boom. They, he outlines it. And... Um, and there's not a an association again with Mary of Bethany. Mm. So that's oh, that's good. That's, um, well, we have kind of left nebulous. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have like half a minute left. <laughs> this goes okay. fast, Jennifer. And I just want to give mm-hmm. a shout out to again to your book, Mary Magdalene: Insights from Ancient Magdala, which we okay. kind of highlighted a few of the things. But there's so much more richness in that book, and you can go to Divine Treasures mm-hmm. and check it out, or it's available on Amazon.com. And then you were saying that there is a nine day novena starting uh, mm-hmm. to Mary Magdalene and her intercession. Yes. And when does that start? Um, well, they, anybody can plug in, but if you want to do it before the feast day, start nine days before July 23rd. So, okay, so um, it's for her feast day. Or July yeah. 22nd. Yeah. All right. Very and, good. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, Jennifer, and, thank you so much for joining us today. And keep Thanks. up that great work for Christ out there in this world that needs him thank so much. You. So God Me bless too. you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Jennifer. Bye-bye. Wow. Catholic Women Now is grateful for the support of Mr. Haas, attorney at law. You know, Mr. Haas is dedicated to providing personal and highly responsive legal services to people who have suffered an injury or an accident. And, of course, accidents just come up. We don't plan for those. So you might you need somebody right away. You I'd call Fred Haas, Fred, double D, Haas, double A, fredhaas.com. Oh, sorry. It's my turn to do the prayer. <laughs> In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for allowing us to be in studio, um, even in this difficult time, Lord God. We trust all things to you, Lord, and we thank you for um, the the example of the feisty women like Mary Magdala. We thank you, Lord God, for those on the front lines who are being feisty as well through this COVID virus. We ask, Lord God, that you take care of all of our listeners and their families, that they may be kept safe and healthy and continuing to grow in their faith and hope and, and yearning for you in the Eucharist. And we ask for the intercession of Mary Magdala to be with us as well. In your holy name, Jesus, we pray all these things. Amen. This is Catholic Women Now, broadcasting from the Mercy One studio. I know this is a really tense time and a very uncertain time financially, but Iowa Catholic Radio is serving as a lifeline for many. So if you could possibly consider supporting us, we would appreciate it. The Iowa Catholic Radio Rosary is up next. Now go do impossible things with God. Talking about the things that matter most to you. Today's Catholic Women. Catholic Women Now with Julie Nelson and Chris McGruder is underwritten by Fred Haas. Over 30 years helping injured Iowans recover losses from accidents and work-related injuries. Fred Double D, Haas Double A. And Farm Bureau agent Cindy Schulte, a licensed representative of Blue Cross Blue Shield of Iowa. CindySchulte.com. Catholic Women Now with Julie Nelson and Chris McGruder every Thursday at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. On the radio voice for Catholic Women Now. 1150 AM, 88.5 FM, and 94.5 FM, and on the Iowa Catholic Radio app, Iowa Catholic Radio. Radio. 